Hello. Today I want to talk about Run It. It's an init system like BSD init or OpenRC. Now, I use Run It on most Linux systems I work on as an init system, but I'm on OpenBSD right now, which has a perfectly good init system of its own. However, I also prefer to use Runit to supervise a hierarchy of application services that I've written. I like to I like to have a separation between managing the hardware and the system services, like tweaking the CPU frequency, mail, NTP, and so forth, and the applications and services I write. Additionally, since Runit can be found across many different systems, I can use it on both OpenBSD and Linux machines alike. So I'm going to show how to use Runit to supervise your own services uh, in addition to whatever init system you may already have. So to get started, let's install Runit. Now it tells us to look at the package readme. So let's actually do that. Uh, and it says to add this line to our rc.local script in order to start it at boot. But I don't want to do that <laughs> because then there wouldn't be any service supervision. And I'd rather have this managed through OpenBSD's rccpl utility. However, we're definitely going to be using this script, just not in this form. Uh, now let's check out the man pages for run it. Um, and you can see, yeah, it can be, it's a uh, Unix process number one, but we're not really interested in running run it as PID one. Now let's check out, uh, run SV here. Now this, uh, monitors a directory for services that it then uses run SV to run those processes. And it's pretty straightforward. And we can then check out run SV to see what that is. It's basically just starts and monitors a service um, and optionally a, a log service if you have it. And it uses scripts like in the service directory, it, it looks for a run script. And then if, it, if, it, if the run script finishes, then it exits and it runs the uh, finish script if that exists. And then there's a bunch of other stuff down here, we can control things by sending commands. Uh, we can customize things. We can send signals and so on and so forth. And we'll, we'll cover some of this. Let's just play around with it. Let's start by running, by making our uh, service directory. So we'll just put this in dot local service. And then we'll, uh, we'll watch that directory. Um, and it's running. Uh, and we can open up a new window and we'll check that out by running the running PS. And you can see here that run SVDR is running, but doesn't really do anything because we're not actually running any services. But it's watching the directory, waiting for services to come online. Um, but let's, uh, let's actually write a service. So let's make a directory in our dot config SV and let's call it hello. And let's go ahead and, and write SV hello run. Uh, and we'll call it, uh, we'll just say echo hello world. And we'll chmod that to CF 700, uh, not plus, uh, just 700. Okay, so we have this script. Let's actually see if this works. Yep, it prints out hello world. And then we can, uh, if we go to man eight SV, we can see that uh, this is the service program for uh, run it. And it basically just reports on the status, controls the state of the service. We can, we can call up, we can call down, we can check the status and we can do a bunch of things with this. First, we need to actually link this service that we've just written. 
uh, to the directory that we're watching, which is that local service. And uh, this is a symbolic link. And as you can see, oh wait, warning, unable to stat hello. Let's try that again. Let's link uh, dot config sv hello to dot local server. Oh, I know what's going on. Uh, we need to do uh, we need to do this like that, and then that yeah, super hello world is getting uh printed every second because after the run script exits run sv dear wait uh well run it waits uh, a whole second before starting the service once again uh and if we look at the service tree uh, at the process tree we can see that uh run s it's uh, it's got a child process with run sv hello and it's just continuously running the script let's quit out of this uh and then if we quit out of it we can see that it's no longer there. Um, so the problem that I was experiencing before is that when I was, uh, uh, if we go to here, if we, this uh, symbolic link was pointing to dot config sv hello. It needs to point to home joseph dot config sv hello. Uh, so I did the uh, symbolic link incorrectly, um, but now that we've got this running, I mean, this is fine and all, but we have to, we want this to run on boot or startup. Um, and uh, we want uh, open BSD's uh, RCCTL utility to control and configure this, this, this daemon or service for us. Let's actually uh, open up, uh, I think it's in user share, oh, sorry user local share the example yeah examples run it and then uh here we go nope this is wrong uh we're in it i want this script uh it's got run sv deer it's running it on a directory with this uh log i'm not going to go into that but if you go into uh man run sv deer you can see one of the arguments is an optional argument called log. And what this basically does is that if you read from the process tree, it'll have this dot, 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 dot message here. And then if there's an error, then it prints that out here. But uh, I, don't, I don't like to use this <laughs> personally. I, I, I like to use log files. Um, but we do, this script is useful, so. Let's see, oh, maybe I'll just open up, quit out of this, and go to my home directory, and write to a file, run it, paste that in, and then path equals home bin path. And then also, uh, that local bin as well. Okay. Um, what does this do? Um, so if we go to KSH and we look up exec, uh, we have to scroll down quite a bit. Let's see. Okay. Um, let's continue. It's, it's down here somewhere. Okay. Here we go. So if we use exec like th this one does here, what basically what happens is that the, the command is executed without forking, and then it replaces the shell process. So basically, uh, if you look at a, at a process tree, there will be something like this, where it's running this shell script. So say shell run it script, and then it, there will be sub processes here. And then when you run this, run svdir will take over this process. And uh, I don't know why I'm explaining this. It's just, it's just something that I find interesting. So anyway, um, this is my script. Let's go ahead and delete that. And we don't need this uh, little option there. 
but we do want to set this to the local service and i think i mean i'm let's see uh bring this up a little and also add the home directory uh maybe uh, maybe i'll set that here home equals home joseph okay um and then quit out of this and then chmod to run it okay let's see and then if we let's let's just run that and you get the same thing and we can check the process tree and you can see that we don't actually see a run it script here uh it's the run sv deer uh, program took over the run it script um in the process tree and that was what that that's what that exec command was doing okay let's quit out of this now let's go ahead and write our own rc script so i was showing uh rcctl and that's just the utility to control the run control files um and we can check out what that is by going to man rc and it basically just scripts when, that are invoked on on the system startup um and you can see more information here's where all the system demons uh, are usually located or services um and they're basically they're basically just ksh scripts or corn shell scripts telling the system how to start stop and stuff like that um and you want to look at rc dot sub r or subroutine or script routine um and basically this tells you exactly what you need to do in order to write your rc script uh, you need to define the daemon variables you need to define uh you need to source the rc.subroutine script and you need to override some variables um and then call this at the very end so let's go ahead and do that uh let's call that run it rc and this is a ksh script and the daemon is home and we'll put this in our local bin and call it run it and then i want to run this as myself and not as root and then i want to source the etc rc.d rc.subroutine file and we don't need reload so we'll set that to no and we want this to run in the background so we'll set that to yes and then we need to be able to find the program that we're running, which is run svdir. Otherwise, rcctl won't know what to do. So we call that from user local sbin run svdir. And it's running against our home joseph.local service directory. And then we call rc command uh, sign one and that should be it and let me just look up my run it script here again i actually think this is wrong let me look up uh, user local let me look up that script from the package readme again by going to user local share doc and package readme's run it uh right yeah we need we need this we need this <laughs> and not the other one uh so um okay and that should be correct and so let's copy this script to dot local bin and then we want to install as root and as the wheel group with mode 555 uh our run it dot rc file to etsy rc.d as run it i guess something i can explain is why did i put the script into the local bin directory and uh here it is as opposed to i guess my home bin directory and i guess the difference for me is that my home bin directory is what scripts that i write 
to help my workflow. Like I've got my display monitor stuff. I've got DWM stuff. I've got fetch mail, a bunch of other stuff. And then here's the stuff that I feel like isn't stuff that I wrote. Like these are some, uh, these are Py Python uh, binaries. And then this is LF. So I, I guess that's just the distinction for me. It's mostly a personal preference, I suppose. Anyway, um, let me quit out of this too. Uh, so let me just clean this up a little bit, and then, and then we can, I guess, run this, run, run it. <laughs> uh, enable. Well, let's enable it. And then, so what that did is basically, if you go to um, rc, is it rc .conf local, that just adds that to your package scripts. And then rcct, then we can start it. And then it says it's okay. Let's uh, let's actually just check to see if that's okay. It says it's failed. So let's go see what's going on. I guess I can see. This looks correct. Okay, so it's not really showing up. Try running a uh, debug. Uh, run it. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Here's the error. Run SD service log. Service file does not. Oh, did I? <laughs> Okay, let's just kill those off right now. I think I know what happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So the problem was is that my run it script here, I, I started run SVD start. I totally overrode what I was doing. So what I really want is joseph.local service. That's the problem. And I need to copy this over to that local bin. Okay. And let's try that again. Sorry it's so sketchy today. Okay, let's see if that worked. Seems to be working. And yep, we can see that run svdir is running against my home local service directory. And it's running a, a hello service. Now, if I remove this, uh, let's see, dot local service hello. I remove that symbolic link from the directory. Um, run SV should turn off. Let's see if it does it. Yep, it looks like it's like shutting down. Yep, and now it's uh, it's gone. And that's about the gist of it. Now you can run your own services and they basically all use shell scripts like this. Um, you can even look at this collection of run scripts here. If you need help figuring how to write your own, they've got all sorts of uh, examples like DHCPD, they have fetch mail, they have Postgres SQL. So yeah, a lot of stuff to look here. If you have any questions for me, be sure to check out my website josephcho.com. I'm on Twitter, GitHub, Reddit, and so on and so on and so on. Anywho, bye-bye.